Good afternoon, Stampers. It's Debbie with Stamp It With Debbie, and today I would like to welcome you to my live presentation. Today I'm going to be showing you three fun projects using the brand new stamp set called Trick or Tweet from the Holiday Catalog. If you haven't had um, a peek of the brand new Holiday Catalog, you can visit my store at the site listed there, Stamp It With Debbie. Dot stampin up dot net and click on holiday catalog and you will be able to see all the fun new projects there are lots of great Halloween there are a few for fall lots of fun Christmas items so I hope that you will stop over there and check it out I'm just going to get set up here to share this with my other group If you're stopping in now, if you would just leave a comment and maybe say hello, tell us where you're, you're viewing from, that would be great. And I think I have us linked now. I link over with my group called Create with Debbie. And in that group, you can actually share images of projects that you're working on on a business page you can't. Um, share those things. So I welcome you to come on over and um, share share images and that's what I would like that group to be is people sharing ideas and different things with people. Let's see we have a couple people. Patricia and I hope I'll say your name right, Win or Winnie from New York and from Indiana. And we'll probably get a couple more people stopping in here. So um, I'll go ahead and get started. Every week I offer a special. If you make a purchase of $30 or more from my Stampin' Store, I will send you the three projects. It has to be before shipping and tax. And this week I'm going to actually send you the projects that are completed. Sometimes I'll send the make and takes, but this time I'm going to send the completed projects. So let's get started. And if you just give me a minute to set up, we're going to make the elephant card first. And let me get all of the supplies for this cute card. Now, sometimes when I show you this project, I might give you another um, layout. It'll be the same layout, but different designer paper, just so you can kind of get an idea of what else you could do with this card instead of just making it exactly like I have it. So I'm going to tell you the um, paper that you need for this. And this week uh, we're using Gorgeous Grape as a card base. And this is cut at eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and one quarter. You also need two pieces of designer paper and all of Stampin' Up's designer paper is two-sided. So you have lots of choices. These are four inches by three inches. We also need a piece of Gorgeous grape cut to one inch by four inches. We need a piece of basic black cut at two and a quarter by three and a piece of white cut at two and three quarters by two. And then we also need just a piece of scrap black that we're going to cut our little bats out with. So I think we should start by stamping our image. And again, I'm going to use the stamp set and it is called Trick or Tweet. And I'll show you real quick here. It's got a bunch of little whimsical um, animals on there all looking for some Halloween candy. And we're gonna start with the Memento Tuxedo Black for our image because we will be using the Stampin' Blends markers. And I always struggle trying to get this straight. So hopefully I'll stamp the word straight. I might take it off camera just so I can get it a little more lined up. Now we're gonna, oh, you know what? I think I, I think I did that the wrong. Okay, our elephant is not going to have um, a pumpkin. I must have cut the wrong size this week. I sure did. I cut it off just a little bit. So I'll have the correct dimensions on my website. 
So after the Facebook Live is completed, I always upload the video to my blog, which is stampitwithdebbie.blogspot.com, and there'll be all of the dimensions there for you in case you missed them during the live. And I'm gonna try to, this might get a little crooked. Ooh, yes, it sure did. It's just gonna be more spooky that way. That happens because the area that I do my videos on is a little bit taller and I'm kind of shortish. And so um, that happens because I can't see down over what I'm, what I'm stamping. So we're gonna color our elephant in the Stampin' Blends and this here is Smoky Slate and this is the Smoky Slate Light. And so this is an alcohol marker and that's why you need to use the Memento Black. Also, you want to use the Memento ink on your clear stamps. All blacks will stain your stamps, but if you use the Stays On Cleaner on your um, photopolymer stamp sets, it will eat the It'll eat the photopolymer. I'm coloring this elephant's nails purple. Actually gorgeous grape. Um, so it will, it will eat it. And you won't notice it right away, but you'll go to stamp with your stamp one day and it's not gonna be a smooth uh, finish anymore. It's, it's gonna be rough edges when you're stamping. So I'd really recommend using the Memento for your photopolymer stamps. So now that we have him colored, her, because she has purple toenails, we're going to take that piece and adhere it to the black piece that we cut. And again, I will put the correct dimensions so that you'll be able to get the um, pumpkin on there. We need to fold our cardstock in half and we'll use our bone folder to make sure we have a crisp edge here. And then today, I'm going to use these two pieces. So it doesn't matter which one you put on first. And just make sure that you have a little border evenly all the way around. Isn't that so cute, the frogs? I love all of this paper. I'm a huge, huge Halloween fan over on my blog. I'm going to be posting some pictures when I get my Halloween decorations out because I love to decorate. This is our piece of one inch by four inch and we're gonna put that right in the center. And then we're gonna take this piece here and put a couple dimensionals on the back. And by a couple, I mean four. That must be why we're cousins, Regina, because we both love to color. My cousin is on, Regina, and she said that she loves to color too. We're gonna punch some bats from this spooky bats punch from the holiday catalog. And they go flying away there. And I'm gonna use, oh geez. I just dropped one of them. Hmm. Well, let me see if I can punch one more. He literally flew away. All right, we have three now. We're gonna put a little bit of the Tombow adhesive onto the bats. And just kind of randomly Put them on to the front of our card. And this one I might do a little bit different because this one had a striped um, at the bottom and you could see it a little better. I think you can still see it okay. So there's our card, just a little bit different design from the one that I originally designed. 
and we're ready to move on to project number two and I'll just move this back here so you can see the website and where do you need to order and this is the next project we're going to do so I'll get all set up Hopefully my next things I actually measured correctly. Sometimes it gets a little hectic and that happens, so we just go with it. All right, I think I have everything I need. I would like to start with showing you how to, um, so this, I'll move that out of the way, this cobweb here, it, you could use the Tombow adhesive and that would work just fine. In fact, that's what I did with the first one, but I wanna show you how to use these. They come like this and they're called multi-purpose adhesive sheets and they make adhering small items like this very easy because your glue doesn't get out and around the edges. So let me bring my big shot in here. And I'm going to show you how to easily put the backing on. So there is a peel strip here. It says peel here. You want to lift it up and this side is super sticky so you want to make sure don't put your fingers or anything else on it because you will end up with adhesive all over you're going to put the cardstock that you're using right on top of there and then you'll put your framelit with the cutting edge down and then go ahead and put put this back over the top it just kind of protects the paper a little and then you want to put your clear plate back on and you're going to run it through just like you would any other framelit only it's got one more um, layer in there so that you can have some adhesive on the back of that all right and i'm going to pull that out i'm going to set my big shot out of the way there's my bat you flew back so it's gonna end up like this you just need to poke those extra pieces out and push those aside and then I'm gonna use my piercing tool just gently push and now it doesn't look any different but if you look on the back there's a layer of adhesive you you have to pull it off and we'll do that in just a minute but as you can see now there is adhesive on all the parts of this small piece and none of your glue is going to come out around the edges. So let's get our pieces here. This is our card base and our project base and this is cut to five and a half by four and a quarter. You also need a piece of designer paper cut at four inches by one and three quarters. You're going to need a scrap of the same color as your card base and you're also going to need a scrap of white and then I have this strip for the greeting at the bottom one half inch by two and a quarter and then of course I have the um, spider web there so we need to score just a little bit so I'm going to grab my scoreboard and we're going to score on the edge that is five and a half inches. And we're going to score at two and two and a quarter. And that's all the scoring that we need to do. And the next thing I want to do is I want to round the corners. And I don't know if you knew this, but on your envelope punch board back here at the edge there's a corner rounder so if you just put that in there so I'm also going to round the top edges of my designer paper and then we're finished with that I'm 
we're going to fold up on our edge here on the, the edge that we just made a score line so it leaves a little gap like this. We want to take this piece of cardstock. I guess to make it different, I could have used the other side. Isn't this a fun side? I really, really like that paper. We're going to put that on the front here. And then to adhere, let's bring this one back. To adhere this, now all we need to do is go along this back edge, and I may need to use the piercing tool, but maybe my fingernail will work just fine. Take the edge off. And now you have adhesive on there. Oh my gosh, somebody keeps trying to call me. Okay, so now you have the cobweb on there. Now what we're going to do is take a couple dimensionals. And I don't know if you can see, but right here on this edge, there's two of them on top of each other. And you're just going to peel one off. And stack another one right on top of it. And then bring it over, and that's going to create a little pocket. Whoops, I forgot to peel that one off. So now you have a little pocket in there. Now we need to do a little bit of stamping. We're going to use our Memento ink and our cat. Oops, I need to turn that over and I'm going to do it on this back. I need to be able to punch it out with the punch. Okay, while I'm at it, I'm going to also stamp my greeting, which is trick or treat, trick or tweet, right there. And we're done with the ink for now. And I'm going to use the light. Flirty Flamingo to color the nose and the ear. And then I'm also going to use the smoky, Light Smoky Slate to color in the cat. It's the same one that I used for the elephant. And I'm just going to kind of guess where he's peeking through here. A couple little places where the gauze didn't quite get him covered. There we go. And now I need to use the Everyday Label Punch. It's this one here. And I'm going to just center him in there. And punch it out. Now we we're gonna punch also one of these in the the gorgeous grape for that too. But we want to make this one. I don't know if you can see here. This white piece is a little bit shorter. And there is a trick to to um, where you cut the gorgeous grape piece. And I've done that before. But today I'm gonna show you that you can also put this back in and get it adjusted. And just cut a little bit more off so now it's going to be a little bit shorter and so we're going to turn that over add a little bit of adhesive and put it right on there for our greeting I'm going to actually snip just a little bit off the edge there and make a banner you haven't seen me do a banner before you if you have a banner punch that's great if you don't just cut up in the center and then cut from one side and then up to 
Apparently I forgot to turn my phone on do not disturb. I was pretty sure that I did, but it seems everyone in my family is needing me today, so. It's getting kind of crazy. All right, we're going to put this greeting right here on the front. And then over here I have a little mini Hershey bar. And what we're going to do is slide that in there. And then we're going to put a dimensional onto the candy bar. That way we can get the best placement instead of trying to put it on our stamped piece and then making it line up with the other part. And then we'll just put our cat on there. And then they can pull it out for a treat. And they have the little card. You could sign right here behind it or on the back if you wanted to or lots of times I, I talk about um, how I give people service people maybe someone I fly a lot so people that work for the airline I might give them these treats I give them out at stores to cashiers to any service people I run into bank tellers sometimes just people shopping and people love to have a little treat and it's amazing how happy it makes people when they know you made something especially just for them okay so i'm going to get the third project and i'm going to put this aside this is the third project we're going to be using and we will need to do a couple things in preparation for this card so we can just get it going together. Let me get the stamp all ready for this one. I have to clean off my old one so I can put them on the blocks. And so for this one, we're going to use the dog. There is also a little bird in this set. And I think this one will do scare up a little fun. Okay, we're all set. So we need to create this circle here. And I'm gonna show you how to do that using the Big Shot, but we also need to color. These are the brand new frosted clear uh, epoxy dots. And they are in the holiday catalog. And I'm gonna, oh, they're stuck to the, the front. They come in a shiny finish and a frosted finish. I'm hoping you can see that. And we're going to take the shiny finish and we're gonna use our blender pens because right here, see we have a purple and an orange and we have some down here. You can use your blender pen because they're alcohol based. We're just gonna color over. I'm gonna do three of each, so just color right over them. And then I'm also gonna use pumpkin pie And we're gonna let those dry just for a minute. They're alcohol based, so they should dry pretty quickly, but we're gonna let them dry while we're doing the rest of our card. So we need to get the big shot back. And I just have a piece of basic black cardstock. And I have two of the layering to put them this way so that they'll make a bigger circle within a smaller circle. And we'll be all done with the big shot. And so this is how it's going to come out of the big shot. And you can see there's the circle and we're just going to use this part, but of course, I'll save that for using later. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and stamp the dog so I can get that done and then we'll just be ready to assemble. So there he is. And we also want to do our greeting. all done. 
one, two. So now we can go over, I probably should have gone over first the pieces that we need. Um, sorry about that. We're gonna use a, a card base at eight and a half by five and a half, and we're gonna score it at four and a quarter. And then go ahead and fold it in half and burnish it. We also need a piece at four by five and a quarter. And I've already run this through the Big Shot using the simple stripes embossing folder. And we can go ahead and adhere that piece right to the front of the card. I also have a piece of designer paper cut to one and a quarter by five and another one at one inch by four. And then that scrap piece of white that I used for the tag, that is one half by two and a half inches. And then I have a piece of pumpkin pie, cut it five eighths of an inch by two and a half. And then this circle um, was in the layering circles. I just made it to fit the dog pretty perfectly there. Let's color him in. We're going to use the crumb cake light and dark blender pens for the dog. And we're also going to use the black to color his hat. So we'll color that in very quickly. I really like coloring with the blender pens. I might have told you this before because when I color, I don't like to have lines in my pictures, so I spend a lot of time coloring over and smoothing things out so that they don't leave any lines anywhere. And these alcohol markers just blend all the lines in really well. So I'm using Gorgeous Grape for his hat and his spooktacular cape here. While I'm coloring, do you guys celebrate Halloween? Do you go all out, trick or treat, or pass out candy? If you just leave me a thumbs up or a happy smiley face, I'll know that you do. Like I said, I'm, I'll am i be sharing some pictures later of my house um, in Michigan when I get back there to show you how much I decorate. I'll, I'll share that over on my blog and on the Facebook so you guys can see it because we are one block from our elementary school and when my kids were in school, I loved it when the kids would come by and say, this is Mason, it's me, so-and-so, and they would lift up their mask and um, I don't have that so much, but now I have the brothers and sisters who are bringing their, their kids, some of their kids and their brothers and sisters by and they still say hello, so I still love to see them. All right, we're gonna color his eye. We're almost done. And his nose. Now let's do his tail too. Okay, so we're all done with that piece. And we're ready to assemble. Um, one more thing, I just need to get a couple bats with the bat punch one more time. And we'll be all ready to assemble now. So the first thing that, you guys, I'm so sorry if you can hear that when people call. I'm so embarrassed. I swore that I put my phone on do not disturb, but apparently I did not. And so you wanna put this on very lightly just kind of for placement. And then we'll put the other piece kind of slightly under it. My daughter is taking her cat to the vet today, so I'm guessing that's her calling me, asking me something about the cat, but what they are calling me about. So this piece, we're gonna place under here, but it's gonna be a little bit long. So we do need to trim a little bit of that off, just put it, around your circle where you want it placed and then go ahead and cut it. And then this is a silver 
um, cobweb and I did already run it through with the adhesive on the back. So all I need to do, maybe you're easier said than done. Okay, pull that off. I'm gonna stick that on there. I'm going to use my liquid adhesive for this one. And I'm going to stick that on there. Just hold it for a minute so it dries. And then I do need to cut the banner for these. So I'm going to line up the ends of these two pieces and I'm gonna cut the banner at the same time. So this way, once I cut it, I can move this white one back and they line up perfectly. So I'm going to adhere the white one onto the paper, or on paper, the pumpkin pie, and I am going to cut just a little bit of that off because that needs to fit back in behind the dog. We're going to put the dog on with a couple dimensionals. So I'm going to have that ready. I'm also going to put some adhesive on the back of the greeting. So I can kind of do it all at the same time. I want to slide the end of this banner underneath the dog. So I'll push the dog down, push up the scare a little fun, and now we're ready to place our bats and our gemstones here. So I think I'm gonna put a bat up there. And I might put one over here. And then I think I'm going to place these gemstones before I do the rest. That way I can kind of have a an eyeball of where the bat should go. So I'm going to do two orange and a purple up here. I think I'll put that one on there. And then I'll do two purple and an orange down here, or pumpkin pie, actually. Aren't those super cute coloring them? So I think I will put this last bat on. And I'm gonna put him down here. So these are the two different designs. And I'll try to clear the space here so we can get all of the projects out for this week. And again, if you place an order through my online store of $30 or more, I'm going to send you these projects this week. You can find all of the supplies you need for these projects and more over on my um, online store at stampitwithdebbie.stampinup.net. And I hope that you loved these projects, and I will see you again next week at 4 o'clock. And the directions, all of the directions and I will give you the correct ones for the elephant with the pumpkin pail over on my blog at stampitwithdebbie.blogspot.com and you can see re -see the video there play it you can share the video I would greatly appreciate you sharing the video if you would do that now I forgot to mention that earlier that just helps my business reach more people I would really appreciate that so I hope that you have a great rest of your week and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you for stopping by and have a good week.